I always knew the story of Creek would take more than one book to tell. The characters and the world were just too rich and diverse to confine to one standalone story. No, this tale would need more than one book to tell it. It began back when Creek was still a fantasy story brewing in the mind of a 17-year-old daydreaming in his English class. Back then, that daydreaming boy couldn't imagine that his story would transform and take on a new life. But here we are. Creek is out. Summer vacation is out. And now, so is the disappearance of Derek Harrison. This story took about a year to write. I took like a month to like relax and get myself back together. And then I started writing it in February. Today is February 1st, which means I'm officially starting production on the disappearance of Derek Harrison. I'm super excited to start working on this. I've been planning this for a long time. I was planning it while I was planning the first book. So I took January off. It was supposed to be a month of rest, but I kind of used it not only to rest, but also to plan. And so and now it's February 1st, and that means we are officially starting production on this book. I'm excited. So yeah, let's get started. This story is more than just figuring out what happened to the 16 year old title character. It's a closer look at the dynamics of the Harrison family through the eyes of its youngest family members, Matthias, Diedrich, and Allison, who are Derek's siblings, and cousin Derek, who returns as a protagonist from the first book. So if you watched the documentary on the first book, then you would know that this story started out as a fantasy story. It's just a continuation of that same fantasy plot I came up with all the back like five years ago. It's still the same plot. So what are some of the changes and like what are some of the things that are different from the first book? If you read the first book, it was in first person. This sequel is going to be in third person. That's one change I've made. I'm really just excited to explore the story and explore this world more, explore this town more, you know, uncover more things that have gone on in this town and just learn more about the characters. Because like I said in the first documentary, my favorite part of writing is character writing. And so that's what I'm excited to do with this book. I'm excited to explore the characters some more and get into their heads some more and discover more about them. The story was originally conceived as a mystery story after watching a classic Hollywood film, which generated the idea to pattern the story after that. I've wanted to write a mystery for the longest time. And so knowing that I had this part of the plot coming up, I was like, let's turn it into a mystery. And so that's what I decided to do. I turned it into a mystery and I wanted to do like an old school type of mystery. You know, like when you think like those old black and white movie mysteries, you know, like those old school mysteries, that's what I wanted to do. Another thing I wanted to do was do what's called an epistolary story, which is basically a story that's told through documents. I came up with this idea when I took American English in college and our professor had us read The Coquette and I was like, I wanna write a story like that one day. And so what I've decided to do is I've decided to take all of my desires and put it all together in one. With this sequel, I want to write it in like a kind of like a classic style. That's what I want to do with this one because it'll match the style that I want to go for. And so to achieve that, the research I've done for this book has been reading a lot of classic literature and watching a lot of old black and white movies because I really want to stick the writing style and I really want to stick the way that people spoke in those movies to really just give the feel. And it's going to be very experimental and I am really excited to write it, and that's what we're doing. Production on this story began during the writing of Creek, so I had to revisit what had already been established about the characters in the first book. Tell me, Mr. Harrison, the principal said, don't you think it would be better to do as the Lord says and submit to my authority rather than argue with me? Yes, sir, I mumbled. I mean, you must be aware how it looks that Bishop's son is in my office. You're such a meathead. Listen to me. I cupped Kiana's face. I don't care about anything that happened before we got together. All that matters to me is our present and our future. Future? Yeah, I want to marry you one day. Marry me? Kiana's eyes bulged. You thought I was just dating you for fun? I plan to steal you away from your grandmother's house for good. I'll tell you what, Kiana patted my back. I'll marry you after you graduate. That could take up to four years. You said you wanted four years worth of a relationship for your troubles, right? Me and my big mouth, I grumbled. Matthias and Diedrich had been fighting for seven years. 
It started when Aunt Celia put Matthias out of the house. He blamed Dietrich for getting him kicked out, and they hated being around each other ever since. Whether we like it or not, Cornbread has been successful at getting girls, Allison said. Now if he'd just commit to one, preferably Nisha, so she'll stop complaining to me about him not committing to her. Seriously, ref? Allison shouted as she shot from her seat. A flag? A lady doesn't do that, Allison, Aunt Celia said. This is why I didn't want to sit with you, Allison huffed. It's a football game. You should still act like a lady, Aunt Celia whispered. But it's really insulting that the people of this town can't tell us apart. We're not twins, and we don't even have the same parents. Well, you do look a lot alike, Dad reasoned. And you both have the same name. Marlon hated me. I felt it when he looked at me with his cold brown eyes. His voice conveyed it when he spoke to me with no emotion. The way his body tensed up every time I came near him and relaxed when I moved away from him. If I could, I would take back what I said about not caring how he felt about me because I did care. He hated me and he wanted to get away from me. It's the only explanation for why he would marry one of those Perry girls right out of high school. Harris sends our family through thick and thin. It's definitely thin right now, Derek muttered. It won't always be though, I encouraged him. We'll always be here for you, just like I'm sure you'll always be here for us, because that's what our family does. We stick together, if you say so, Derek said. I had many challenges along the way, the biggest one being finding time and motivation to write the story. But along with those challenges came opportunities to overcome them and evolve my skills as a writer. And my favorite part of writing this story was exploring the characters and their motivations as well as their hindrances. Today is May the 4th, 2022. I am wrapping up production on summer vacation. It'll be out on June 1st. I'm excited for that. I'm transferring into full-time production on The Disappearance. I was going to try and do 32 chapters for this one, but I'm thinking we're going to have to go up to 40. My research has been going really well. I think I'm getting better at sticking my style, so that's where we're at. And yeah, that's, that's the update. Today is May 27th. It is about five days, five, four days until we publish Creek Summer Vacation. So that's where the majority of my focus is right now on finishing that and getting that prepared and ready to go. As far as the disappearance goes, it's going pretty well. I have decided to go from 32 chapters to 40 chapters because I feel like it'll help service the story. So we have had a setback though. My laptop broke. So I had to get a new one. Thankfully, my work was not because I had it saved in like four different places, but also I was able to um, recover the hard drive from that laptop as well, so my research wasn't lost either. So thankfully, like, I still have everything I need to write this story, and I'm very happy, and I'm very thankful, and very grateful for that. But we're gonna keep working, so that's what we're gonna do. It's going well. We've got about six months until it's time to publish, so it is what it is. Today is June 27th and the power is out. So I am using a lantern as a light source. My research has been going really well. I've been reading a bunch of um, classic literature and I've started to notice some trends when it comes to storytelling, specifically between how male authors write their stories and how female authors write their stories. I've noticed that male authors tend to be Harsh, they tend to use more harder language. If that makes sense, and for some reason their protagonists always go on this like, they're always going on a journey, they're always running, always traveling all over the place for who knows how long. Whereas female authors, their stories tend to use more like softer, flowery language. And one drop I've noticed is that the protagonists somehow always end up hurt, end up having to spend the night at somebody's house, end up that's just one thing I've noticed. That's my update. I've been reading a bunch of classic literature and watching a bunch of classic movies just kind of get the feel. I think I'm getting the hang of it. We'll see. So today is July 31st. Um, this is my update. I'm playing a video game right now. The reason why I'm playing it is because I need to get into the mind of certain characters. 
And honestly, this is the first game I've played where the default character is black. But as far as writing goes, I've only finished one chapter completely. Right now I have the major scenes written. Some of them I have the storylines planned out. Um, I'm not concerned because this happens with every book I've written so far. Usually as we get closer to the deadline, we tend to get the in-between stuff written, so I'm not all that concerned. I'm also listening to a podcast that I came across that helps to get into the mind of the two characters that I'm writing, which are Matthias and Dietrich. I'm trying to get into their minds because Matthias has just a whole bunch of issues to work out. Dietrich has commitment issues, so I need to figure that out as well. I cut the game off, so let's talk for up. I've only got one chapter done. <laughs> It's gonna be August. I only got one chapter in it. I'm not all that worried about it because this is this is normal when it comes to writing my books and stuff like that. Usually, I don't say I would play around, but what I be doing is the order I write in, I write like what I've already thought of first. So like usually there's like major scenes, important scenes, the emotional moments. Those are usually what I write first, and that's of course that's after I've planned and stuff like that, plotted out storyline and stuff like that. But after I write out those like scenes that are already on my mind, then I go in and I do what I like to call connecting the dots, which is writing the stuff that's in between. And usually during that time, that's when I come up with more ideas and more stuff to put in there. So, um, yeah, so today I'm trying to get in the mind of DJ and Matthias. They are hot. They're hot messes. That's what I like to call them. They're hot messes. I just like to call them my hot messes because Matthias just, he got so many issues. <laughs> he got so many issues that it's just, it don't make no sense. And then Dietrich, Dietrich's storyline is just so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just, it's just, yeah. So that's what I'm working on. I'm just trying to get into their minds. And I think I'm doing really well of sticking this older style of writing i think i'm doing very really well at getting that down i've been taking a lot of ideas from like these older stories and using them in the writing i think it's going to be great so today is september 3rd i am here to talk about some of the storylines and what i'm doing with them i'm going to talk about matthias and dietrich today and their storylines for dietrich as we saw in the first book he is you know a bit of a flirt and so we're going to be exploring that more in this book and I plan on using like kind of like the film noir style of storytelling to explore that. So yeah, I'm kind of excited for that to see how that plays out. And then for Matthias, you know, he's kind of like the exile of the family. He's been kicked out of the out of the house. That's just what I'm exploring for them too. And I'm kind of excited to explore their stories because you know, as characters, they're kind of similar, but they're not. And I'm ready to explore that and see how that goes so yeah that's what we're doing as far as those who are concerned for allison i wanted to focus on what it was like for her to grow up as the only girl amongst her and her brothers and how everybody had all these expectations on her and how she should act and how she should carry herself as a lady and what they expected of her to do with her life versus what she wanted to do with her life and the goals and the accomplishments that she was setting out to do and with the other derek the one that is not missing his storyline is focused on like his identity and what it's like to grow up how he did and how he's basically named after his grandfather and has the same name as his cousin everybody's always associating him with either his grandfather or his cousin grouping them together since they have the same name and look alike and have similar characteristics and traits and so i wanted to explore what it was like for him to kind of have to carve out his own identity outside of that and so those are the storylines that i wanted to explore with them for since they are the main characters of the book when I add biblical themes to the story, I want to make sure that they match the storyline of the story. So I always make sure to pray and ask the Lord what he wants me to include into the story. The sermon for this book was In My Distress, which comes from Psalms. The characters are in distress. One of their family members is missing. They don't know what's happened. They don't know what's going on. And so I chose this specific sermon to kind of just give encouragement just for anybody who reads it when they're going in distress to know that things will still work out for your good, even if it's not the outcome that you're hoping for and expecting. With this book, I wanted to accomplish themes such as feelings of abandonment and neglect, unrequited love, arranged and unequaled marriages, power and influence, 
parent-child relationships, sibling relationships, friendship, and biblical themes. And I wanted to do it in a way that resembled the style of classic literature and film. So in parent-child relationships, what I'm exploring is really the effects that parents have on their children. I guess that kind of also ties in with generational trauma and how parents shape their children's actions and the way they go about life. As far as identity goes, I'm kind of playing with it a little bit with one of the characters. Really, like, I'm really playing with, like, duality and stuff like that and how identity is important and not only to one's to self, but also to how other people perceive that person. As far as sibling relationships goes, I'm exploring, you know, positive and negative sibling relationships because both do exist. I'm exploring, you know, healthy romantic relationships, unhealthy romantic relationships, and how they're used and misused. And also marriage, you know, traditional marriage, you know, marriages that shouldn't have happened. As far as mental health goes, you know, we're exploring the effects of mental health or something bad happens or something traumatic happens, you know. And that kind of goes hand in hand with pain because something bad did happen in this book. And so we're exploring like the mental health effects of that bad thing happening. And then friendship goes. I'm also exploring friendship, you know. Friendship is another important relationship in people's lives. And I want to explore how important friendship relationships are just as much as family relationships and romantic relationships. And so those are the themes that we are exploring in The Disappearance. I'm excited. I've got about three months and some change to pull it together. So we'll see how this goes. Today is October 8th. I'm still writing. I'm hoping to have all the preliminary writing done by the end of this month because I plan on using November as the editing and the cohesion month. And what I mean by that is I plan on making sure everything lines up with what was in the first book and making sure the writing is good and the grammar is good and all of that good stuff. So that is what's going on this month. There are basically about 20 chapters left to write. So that's what's going on. I'm going to finish those chapters by the end of this month and have it all done. Finding time and motivation to actually write it was the hardest part of writing The Disappearance of Derek Harrison. I had many activities going on in my personal life, so I had to take advantage of downtime to write as much as I could. So that means sometimes I would have to like forego sleep. Sometimes I wouldn't go to bed until about six in the morning. I just had to take advantage of whatever time I had to write this book. It ended up taking me all the way up to the end of December to finish writing the book, which means by that point I was writing and editing it simultaneously. When I finished this book, I felt empty. The story was told and released to the public for them to consume it. Was I happy with it when it first came out? No, but every creative is their own worst critic. And now I can look at it and be proud of what it is. I believe audiences can expect a good story. I believe they can expect a story that I once again wrote from my heart, that I put a lot of time, effort, and research into writing. And I believe it'll be a story that'll be enjoyable to them, relatable to them, and something that they'll hopefully be able to take something away from. Be sure to get your copy of The Disappearance of Derek Harrison today.